This video is part of the Parallels Tech Byte series. In this video, we're going to show you how Parallels RAS integrates with Amazon EC2 and also provides additional values such as support for hybrid scenarios, extensive cost saving and simplified administration. The goal of this video is to show you how Parallels RAS can be used to publish resources from EC2 in no time. We start our journey in the Parallels RAS server console and inside Farm, we navigate to providers and then select Amazon Web Services from the list of many providers you can choose from. We provide a name and optionally a description. You can also specify credentials here. Those credentials are used to deploy the Parallels RAS agent to the template and the clones. If you don't specify credentials at this point, it will use the RAS administrator's credentials. You also specify an access key ID and a secret access key. Those are set up separately inside the Amazon Web Services console. They're very straightforward to do. For more information on how to do that, just check out our administration guide. RAS then goes through a process of confirming the credentials are valid. In our case, they are, which is good news. It then allows us to access AWS using those credentials. So you would select whichever region is most appropriate for yourselves, then choose Finish. We then say apply, and that is it. We've now successfully added AWS as a provider inside Parallels RAS. All of the other steps we're gonna go through in this video are the standard steps you'd go through with pretty much any other provider. And this means a Parallels RAS administrator can get all of this on, up and running without really a great deal of learning and skill and training in the AWS side of things. All the AWS administrator needs to do is supply that administrator with the credentials we've just entered and everything else can be done by the RAS administrator because it's things they already know how to do. So in our case, what we're now gonna do is navigate to RD session hosts and we're gonna find a template which is inside Amazon EC2. So we click on the plus sign and it automatically searches Amazon EC2 for us and it comes back with a list of results. I select the template I have in mind and I choose OK. It then verifies if there's an agent on that machine. And if there isn't an agent, it obviously gives me an option to install that here. I can also customize what automation is going to be done via Parallels RAS on your behalf. As you can see, in our case, the agent is there. So we're all happy. We can click on Next. We then give it a name. These are standard options that you get to choose. I can determine what naming convention the clones have, how many uh, guest VMs I'm going to kind of max out at, and how many VMs are deployed straight away to allow my users to connect. I then click on Next. And it's worth mentioning these settings carefully because they can directly relate to saving you cost. Keep available buffer is there to ensure there are always available VMs for users to connect. The guest date is just whether that VM is powered on or off. Powering it on means it's obviously going to be more responsive to a user when they connect. Powering it off means there's going to be a delay between someone requesting an application if there's no VMs available and then that powering on before it becomes active. And then at the bottom, the delete unused guest VM setting can actually save you a significant amount because what this allows you to do is once the users are drained from the VM, you can completely delete that VM. So from a public cloud point of view, in this case AWS, it also removes my cost. Next, you get to select the instance type of the guest VM. Now, this doesn't have to be the same as the original template VM. This is the size and shape of the VMs that your clones are going to be. You make your choice there and then just click Next. Depending on the VM type, you've also got multiple storage options. And depending on the storage option you pick, AWS lets you select a number of other kind of subcategories. So some storage options lets you manage the IOPS, for example. You then have options to decide how you're going to prepare the image to be cloned. Most of you will have come across this prep before. That is getting on a little bit now. What RAS prep is, is it has the same impact as SysPrep, but it is uh, streamlined and optimized, needs fewer reboots, and it gets done faster. 
it is totally up to you which of those two you use. You can then specify an OU for these clones to be deployed into, and then choose next. So built into RAS, we also have automated optimization. Leaving it set to automatic will optimize a whole load of window settings, making things much more efficient. You can select manual here as well. So if there are specific optimizations you didn't want to apply, you can turn those off and make some customizations, or you can disable optimization at this point. Uh, it's entirely up to you. And then we click next. Then you just specify the license type that you're using. Next again, check everything looks in order and then click finish. Now to implement what you've configured directly into AWS, we click apply. As you can see, it says deployment in progress. If we flip to the AWS console, you can see that there's a clone machine build being built here. It says initializing. And we can now start configuring the settings for the group that these VMs are gonna be in. Now, in that group, we select which template is going to be used. Uh, there's a lot of options in here that are extremely useful. We mentioned a little while ago about uh, removing VMs that have got no users connected. Here at the bottom of this screen, you can see I have a drain option. So these two work in conjunction. Once the number of users connected to the environment has reached a certain percentage, I can then start draining those users, not allowing logons to certain hosts. Those hosts will eventually end up with no users at all connected to them once those users are logged off. That setting then kicks in where I can then start shutting those machines down. This kind of power management is extremely useful when running workloads in public cloud hosting providers such as AWS. So once we've made those changes, we click apply. Then all that's left to do is to publish some resources into AWS. So we click on add. In this case, we're gonna publish a desktop. We're then gonna choose the ID session host that we had. We're gonna select the group that we have just configured, which has got our AWS hosts in. Give it a name, clues enabled, and then we're gonna apply. And that's published the application to my default set of users. I now log in as a user. It detects my client. I determine what type of client I want. Do I want to open it in a browser or do I want to open it in the Parallels client? I choose browser here. And there we go. We've launched directly into our desktop inside AWS in less than eight minutes. And this concludes our video showing you just how easy it is to integrate Amazon EC2 and Parallels RAS. For more content, subscribe to our channel and browse to the Parallels Tech Bytes series.